let us start on a new topic elasticity here what we try to do is quantify in precise terms the impact of one variable on another one and we know that independent variables cause changes in dependent variable and so what we try will try to measure is the impact of a change in independent variable on dependent variable since we are interested in measuring the impact of independent variable on dependent variable in precise terms this is the definition of elasticity that is by how much percent does dependent variable change when independent variable changes by 1% or we could write this as a ratio and that is it is just a ratio of percent change in dependent variable divided by percent change in independent variable now what you should remember in the background is we are trying to figure out the responsiveness of dependent variable due to changes in independent variable and that's what we'll try to do measure it in precise terms now something about nomenclature and that is <clears throat> how do we write elasticity i write this like this it stands for independent variable iv is independent variable this greek letter is stands for elasticity and dv is the dependent variable so and this is very systematic so how would you read this it will be independent variables elasticity of dependent variable let us look at some examples of elasticities on the topics that we have covered we have looked at the demand side and also the supply side and we know quantity demanded of coffee which we have abbreviated as qdc is the dependent variable and then we have bunch of independent variables like price of coffee abbreviated as pc price of sugar price of tea and income so let us look at different elasticity associated on the demand side so we have the dependent variable here where we have the independent variable and we are looking at the impact of price per cup of coffee on demand for coffee and so we'll call this own price elasticity of demand in the second one i have written xp as the independent variable and what xp represents is the price of other goods like price of tea or price of sugar and what is it its impact on demand for coffee and this is called cross price elasticity of demand for coffee another independent variable which can impact demand for coffee is income and we call this income elasticity of demand for coffee on the supply side we'll just look at one elasticity independent variable is price per cup of coffee dependent variable is quantity supplied of coffee and this will be read as own price elasticity of supply for coffee now let us look at measurement issues uh, relating to percent change mathematicians distinguish between what are larger changes and what are smaller changes people or students who are familiar with calculus will be able or uh, will know this difference now let us look at larger changes first by larger changes what we mean is when two points of observation are somewhat apart or there is some kind of a gap in between and this is usually given by discrete numbers for example when we write two points of observation as 1 and 2 we know there are points like 1.1 1.2 1.3 in between so when we are looking at numbers like 1 and 2 what we are looking at are larger changes and the formula for larger changes is as follows percent change in dependent variable which is dv will be dv1 minus dv0 in the numerator divided by the average of dv1 and dv0 so dv1 plus dv0 divided by 2 
and this whole expression is multiplied by 100 to give us percent change in dependent variable. In a similar way, we can figure out what will be percent change in independent variable. It will be the difference between the two values of independent variable divided by the average of the two values and this whole thing times 100. And what is sub subscript 0? It refers to the initial observation and the subscript 1 refers to the final observation. So this is the formula to measure larger changes in dependent as well as independent variables. We know independent variables elasticity of dependent variable is defined as the ratio of percent change in dependent variable divided by percent change in independent variable. We know the formula for percent change and so what I have done here is I have written down the formula for percent change in dependent variable and divided this by percent change in independent variable. So I've just copied those. And now what we can do is we can cancel out the common term. So 100 will be canceled. We can cancel out 2. And, what, when, and we can arrange, rearrange all this. And what we'll get is this expression, which will measure elasticity in case of larger changes. And when we are looking at larger changes, it is called arc elasticity, arc elasticity. So remember, keep and make a note of this formula, and this is something we'll use again and again. Now let us work through arc elasticity using some specific numbers. We have P1, which is price in the original situation, which is $1, QD, which is quantity demanded in the original situation, which is 5 and P2 is $5 and QD2 is 1. So how will we calculate price elasticity of demand? We know price is the independent variable. Demand or quantity demanded is the dependent variable. So let us just plug in these values and what we'll get is change in dependent variable will be 1 minus 5 divided by change in independent variable which will be 5 minus 1 and this will be multiplied by the sum of prices which is the independent variable and divided by the sum of quantities which is the dependent variable and you simplify this and what you will get is negative 4 divided by plus 4 times 6 divided by 6, you can cancel out and what you are left with is negative 1. So this is how we would calculate our elasticity and in this case what we are looking at is price elasticity of demand. Now let us look at percent change when we are looking at smaller changes and when we use the term smaller changes, what we have in mind is when two points of observation are adjacent to one another, or what we are looking at is a continuous function, like a line or a curve. For example, if I draw a line, you have one point here, and just next to it, without any gap, is the next point. For this, the formula for percent change is this one. Percent change in dependent variable will be change in dependent variable. Triangle represents change divided by the value of dependent variable. And this whole expression will be multiplied by 100 to calculate percent change. We do the same thing in terms of independent variable. Change in independent variable divided by, change, by value of independent variable and this whole expression times 100. Once again, make a note of this, and this will be useful. So let us write down the formula when we are formula for elasticity when we are looking at smaller changes. 
And when we do this for smaller changes, what we are looking at or calculating is called point elasticity. And this has to be distinguished from arc elasticity, which measures larger changes. Once again, independent variable's elasticity of dependent variable is percent change in dependent variable divided by percent change in independent variable. And since we are looking at smaller changes, what I have done here is simply copied the formula for percent change in dependent variable for when we are looking at smaller changes and divided this by the formula for percent change in independent variable. Once again, we can cancel out the common terms and rearrange. And this is what we get as the final formula for point elasticity. <clears throat> and so here what we have is just the changes, changes in dependent variable divided by change in independent variable. And this ratio is multiplied by the value of independent variable divided by dependent variable. Now let us calculate point elasticity when we are looking at the demand side. And look at this equation. Quantity demanded of coffee equals 5 minus 2p, where p stands for price. And what we have to do is figure out price elasticity of demand when price is 2. So we can plug in 2 here and calculate what will be the value of QDC or what will be the demand when price equals $2 and this will be one cup of coffee. So we know price, which is the independent variable, the value is $2. Quantity demanded, the value of this is one cup of coffee. Now, another thing we need is change, I'll just write triangle, in QDC divided by change in price. And what will this be? Now, look at this equation and look at this coefficient associated with the independent variable. And you should know this. What is this? This is the slope of the demand equation. And what is slope? It is change in quantity demanded divided by change in price. And what is this value? Negative 2. So what will be price elasticity of demand for coffee? In this case, it will be slope of this demand equation times price, which is the independent variable, divided by quantity demanded. And here it will be negative 4. So this is how we calculate elasticity of demand using point elasticity formula. And so where should you use point elasticity formula when you are given an equation like this one? Here is a summary of the two elasticity formulas. The first one we looked at is the arc elasticity, where we are looking at larger changes. And so what we have here is change in dependent variable divided by change in independent variable times the sum of independent variables divided by dependent variable. And like I said, make a note of this formula. Here is the formula for point elasticity when we are looking at smaller changes. And the first part is change in dependent variable divided by change in independent variable. And this is given by the slope of the equation. And this is multiplied by the value of independent variable divided by the value of dependent variable. Suppose the value of elasticity is given to us as negative 5. The negative sign would indicate a negative relationship between the two variables. The number negative 5 means when independent variable increases by 1%, dependent variable falls by 5%. If we extend this argument, for example, if independent variable increases by 10%, then dependent variable will fall by 50%. Compare this elasticity of negative 5 with negative 1, and you find here the dependent variable is less responsive to changes in the independent variable relative 
to the first case. Thank you for your time.